Hello, I'm Luke Hatfield. You join me alongside Joe Massey through the wonders of the internet. Joe Massey at Griffin Park and me, of course, at, in my home office. Uh, Joe, very West nice office. From... <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, West Brom uh, travel down to Brentford today. Um, but I tell you what, a one 0 defeat was not what the doctor ordered, was it? Um, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't what Doctor ordered. It's, it's a really frustrating afternoon, um, frustrating evening. Sorry, um, I should say uh, for, for Albion. Um, just about to be booted out of the ground. So going to have to wrap this up quickly. But that's why I was a bit distracted then. Apologies for that. But. Yeah, the truth is, they just didn't really get going tonight. They struggled for rhythm, really, from the first minute to the last. It was a very sort of disjointed performance. Just speaking to Slavin Bilic, then he just said the passing wasn't there. When, when they tried to move the ball, they tried to almost move it a bit too ferociously, if you like. It was just, I don't know what, it was strange, really, when, when we've seen them play so so well all season. But that, that zip, that, mm. that movement, that just that, that bit of quality, again, you have to say, from um, it just wasn't there. Um particularly in the first half. Um, Brentford took the lead through Oli Watkins, now the Championship's joint top scorer. I um, think a fair few errors in the build-up to the goal. Difficult tonight because I didn't have replays here, but from what I gather mm. from Twitter, Matt Phillips maybe lost his runner in the build-up to the goal and then Ahmed Aghazi, certainly it seems like he could have done better. Oli Watkins just getting ahead of him to tap in a low cross from uh, De Silva. He was very, very lively for Brentford, it has to be said. Um, mm. And then, yeah, the, the, sort of the rest of the first half just sort of almost petered out. Brentford were always sort of the better team. They were always more inventive. They were always a bit brighter on the ball, but they didn't create a lot of chances, really. They didn't very, very mm. little um, in that first half. And then Albion made the change at the break. Filip Kravinovic and Kenneth Zahor came on. It meant going back to that 4-3-3 system that was so successful before lockdown. And there's no doubt about it, Albion improved. Um, they improved significantly mm. for those changes. I think having having Kravinovic in there was, was a massive lift. Um, and Zahor came so close early on in that half to pulling them level. A cracking ball from Pereira, who's now, of course, on the right. Um, and mm-hmm. Zahor swivelled beautifully and, and sort of rattled the crossbar from 20 yards, which was the closest Albion came in the whole game, really, to scoring. And they played with more intensity from that point. They played with more purpose. They tried to force the issue a little bit. They looked a lot more threatening. And they sort of pressed um, for an equaliser. Um, but again... Overall, there, there wasn't that moment, there wasn't that clear-cut chance when they should have got that equaliser, and, and Brentford didn't really create it either, but you have to say Brentford, the last sort of 10 minutes, they did see that out, out really, really well. So, overall, mm. you'd have to say it was um, a deserved win for Brentford, and, and Albion, Bilic admitted afterwards, he said they, they weren't good enough, they didn't impose themselves on the game, um, and they didn't show their quality. Yeah, certainly didn't. And now, I mean, it's two games since the restart, goalless. And, and if you stretch it out before the restart, was it four games now where Albion have, have struggled to, uh, or haven't scored? I mean, a lot of the fans are starting to worry, aren't they? Yeah, and, we, and obviously, Billy was asked. We asked him about that um, just post match just now. He said it's obviously four games without a goal. And but look at the look at the players they've got. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, mm. it's Callum Robinson, it's Mateus Pereira, it's Grady Dean Garner, it's Matt Phillips, it's Kamal Grzycki not even in the squad. Kyle Edwards, Charlie Austin. I mean, they've got such a wealth of talent going forward. But when I put it to Billy like that, that they've got this wealth of talent, he said, "Yeah, we have, but it's up to they, they've got to do better. They can't just relax and go look at us. What a talented bunch we are. The goals are going to come. They just it's, that's not their mindset. That's not their attitude." And he's told them tonight that they should they should be suffering tonight really, um, and they're gonna they're gonna have to improve because that's the two things in both games really they've just in and, when when it's got to like that final third in and around the box a lot of times moves have broken down that quality hasn't been there they have struggled to create clear cut chances so mm. look it's probably rustiness it's three months without football it's been a very long time the quality of these players surely means um, a glut of goals is just around the corner but. Bilic, not happy with that tonight. He didn't pull any punches in his post-match press there. He said they weren't good enough, particularly in the final third. Um, and that is what they're going to be working on improving in the next couple of weeks, ahead of two absolutely massive games, but very, very winnable games um, against Sheffield Wednesday and Hull. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say just before you go, Joe, because I know you're short on time. But the gap now obviously shrunk down. Got Leeds playing Fulham tomorrow. Two massive games now, as you said, Wednesday and then Hull. Yeah, and I think, I think look, the bottom line is we saw that the Blues game finish 0 0. We know all about it. We know they looked a little bit rusty. But if you look across the championship, that first round mm-hmm. of fixtures, everyone was very rusty. Nobody was really at their free flowing best. Perhaps maybe apart from Brentford, who obviously mm-hmm. did a very good job um, beating Leeds. But 
look, the first round of fixtures is almost a write-off. It, 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 it was, it's, it's been so long since they played. Tonight is a disappointing result. It's frustrating even. Of course it is. But let's be honest, Brentford are a very, very good side. Um, mm-hmm. They've got some fantastic players. And on the night, they won the game. It, it was a game of very, very few chances. Ollie Watkins is, is the difference. He's made. He's, he's got his twenty second goal of the season or twenty third goal of the season. I can't remember what it is, but and that's mm-hmm. proven to be a difference tonight. But look, have we been fantastic all season? I think we now have to look at what a massive opportunity these next two games are. They've wobbled slightly. They've wobbled slightly since the restart, but you couldn't really ask for two better fixtures on paper than the next two matches. And Albion need to will go out and they need to go out and they need to secure, not only secure two victories but they need to do it in style really and get and get some mm. of their belief back and get some of their rhythm back and and just remember what a damn good side they are and I, I'm absolutely sure they will in the next two games because there's there's too much here there's too much quality here not to not to just push on and 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 find that form rediscover that form that has made them so successful this year. Top man, Joe. Get yourself home. Get yourself in bed. Uh, busy week, I'm sure, ahead of you. Right, that just about does us uh, for all the match reaction. Make sure you stay with expressandstar.com.